We're very passionate about providing a connection to the consumer. We want our customers to know where their meat's produced, how it's produced, and the decisions that are behind. So it's very important for us to be able to, you know, produce meat that's that's clean, um, that's sustainable, and that can provide ongoing opportunities for our customers and our, our family. Thanks for having us here today, Adam. Um, can you tell us a bit about your property, Spring Hill? Yeah, so Spring Hill's a 300 acre property located near Gresford in the Hunter Valley. We're located just out of Gresford, um, just downstream from the Lostock Dam. So it goes right up to the top of the ridge up here on the mountain. Uh, we're like a long rectangle, so about half of that ridge is ours, and then the boundary's coming back down this way, and then all the way behind us down here to the Patterson River. When we first bought Spring Hill, um, we bought it as a place that could carry 50 to 60 breeders. That's what it had um, historically ran. Now we currently run about 60 to 70 breeders at any one point, and then we've run, we're running between 50 and 70 uh, finishing cattle as well at the same time. I strongly believe that is a result of our management practice changes uh, and the way that we now manage our cattle. We run regenerative practices here where we've implemented um, paddock subdivision, so all our paddocks are split into sort of five-acre five paddocks. Uh, we rotate cattle everywhere from every day to every week. Um, that provides each paddock more rest as we go through. Um, we've implemented uh, water infrastructure. Uh, we've changed from like a conventional cropping type setup to multi-species um, cropping for our winter pastures. Um, yeah, and we produce grass-fed Angus beef uh, for our retail store. Can you give me a bit of background on the property? What made you want to take up this region ag journey? Uh, it was based around our family, so we got young kids and we wanted to make sure that the environment they were working in was safe so they weren't working with chemicals and stuff like that. Um, and also that, that the land that we were managing was going to be better when we handed it over to our kids rather than depleted. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of education around regenerative farming and a lot of that sort of started making sense to us. Um, and we started implementing our learnings pretty quickly and, and found that it just worked for us. So as you've changed your practices to align with more regen ag um, management, have you run into any challenges along the way? Yeah, so initially our biggest challenge was the infrastructure. So dividing our paddocks up, this place was three paddocks when we first came here. So we've now got it into about 37 or 40 paddocks. So the water infrastructure and the fencing infrastructure was the two biggest challenges we had to get sorted. So what type of fencing have you used to split up your paddocks and how are you sourcing um, your water for all of these paddocks? So predominantly our fencing is uh, two-strand electric fencing, all our dividing fences. Um, we've done like permanent barb fences for laneways and sort of heavier traffic areas where like holding pens and stuff like that. Um, the water we pump, we've got two separate systems. One comes from the Patterson River where we pump from the river to a header tank and then it pumps out to troughs in every paddock uh, via a pressure pump. And then on the other side of the property we pump out of a large spring-fed dam up to a header tank with a solar pump and then the header tank gravity feeds down through the paddocks to concrete troughs in every paddock. Can you tell me a bit about your dam rehabilitation project? Yeah, we had a gully that was quite eroded above our dam. Um, this dam is what we use to pump to our header tank, so the, the silt and stuff that was coming down that gully was going to create problems down the track. So um, we fenced off that area with um, electric fencing, so we took the cattle away from that area. Uh, we then staked in some hay bales at the bottom of all the sharp um, erosion edges to try and hold some soil there and be able to let the grass grow back. And then we planted some trees and shrubs in there to try and create a bit of, bit of structure in the soil. And so far that, that gully's now almost completely repaired itself. Uh, it's all grassed up. We only let stock in there now occasionally just to graze it lightly and then we remove them again. Have you seen any improvements to water quality or anything like that? Yeah, so the water quality's pretty great now. It's nice and clear. Uh, we recently desilted the dam so that now, because we believe that the silt shouldn't come down there now. So um, yeah, we're pretty happy with how the dam's come up. So Adam, you've planted some areas of your property to multi-species pastures. Can you tell me a bit about the benefits you're seeing from those new pastures? Yeah, so we've seen um, increased livestock weight gains. Uh, we weigh our cattle every week. So our finishing cattle, we've seen a noticeable improvement in weight gains. Um, we've also noticed that after dry spells, they're our first paddocks to respond. Uh, we put that down to a better root structure, um, nice deep roots that are gonna access the water. Um, and also we've, we've noticed a lot more soil biology, so a lot more life in the soil, it's a lot more friable. Um, yeah, it's, it's a better structured soil as well. Uh, we eliminated synthetic fertilisers and chemicals from our cropping side of the business um, and we started using biological seed treatments and foliar sprays. Um, the first year we did this we trialled it side by side with conventional sown paddocks and we noticed a significant decrease 
in the bio biological treated side, there was a significant decrease in white moth attack. So insect resistance was much better. Added benefits are that we're not hurting our, our soil biology in any way. Uh, it actually helps improve our soil biology. So, you know, in comparison with chemicals where we could do harm to our soil biology and then we have to repair that um, with the biological treatments and fertilizers, uh, it actually helps our soil biology. Have you done any testing for your soil biology since you've started using these treatments? Yeah, we do testing with local land services every year. Um, so we're always testing a, a range of things and that ranges from soil biology, uh, pH levels, water retention, uh, pasture diversification uh, and a couple of other things. Adam, can you talk us through um, what stage of your farm plan you're up to? Yeah, so Spring Hills um, pretty well fully developed like to where we want to get it to. Um, there's a couple of things that we still want to do, which is um, fence off our creek. We've got double frontage to Guy Gallon Creek. Uh, we'd like to fence that off and sort of um, control the grazing on that, that creek. Um, and also we'd like to look into um, like permaculture swales to try and slow the water flow down and absorb more into our landscape. Um, but then we've also acquired another place up near Walker, so we're now developing that place to implement um, rotational grazing and all the, all the stuff that we've done here. Um, the other thing that we're looking at now is like farm tech, so we're looking at water monitors and trough monitors so that we can keep track of all the properties and where the water's at and um, yeah, be able to see if there's any issues with that. So Adam, what benefits are you hoping to see from implementing these new management practices? Uh, we're hoping to see a higher production, so more carrying capacity, um, better species of plants coming through, so more desirable species, um, and also um, better in water infiltration, so we want to store more water on, it, on our properties, a um, bit more resilience to drought if we can do that, um, and also just having options for our kids to be able to come into the business. So if we can increase the production and the quality of, of plants we're growing, then hopefully we've got more options for our kids to be able to enter our, our business when they get to the age. And over what time frame do you think you'll see these benefits? Uh, we've seen results initially in probably two years, some results, but obviously every year it's getting better and better. And we're sort of seven years into this, this path that we're going down. So um, we've seen a drastic increase in our carrying capacity um, and our water retention is is exceptional. Um, we've done testing on that every year. Um, so yeah, we're seeing good results already. So it'll be interesting to see what the future holds. So what advice would you give to someone who's wanting to take this more holistic farming approach? Uh, I would say invest the time in getting educated. So we initially started with um, courses through resource consulting services. Uh, we did a holistic management course. And then we started doing a lot of pasture field days, um, as well as just educating ourselves. So a lot of research and stuff on, on different sort of options and farming practices. So I would say get educated first, like start to learn some different practices and then implement and trial them things. We were very quick to come home and start implementing certain learnings that we had, trial it, see what worked, what didn't, and then adjust for what suited our business best.